Hello and welcome to another Portworks demo. In this demonstration, we are talking about the latest Portworks Enterprise release version 2.10 and specifically application control, which is a new feature that was introduced in the latest release. Application control gives platform architects a finer grain control over IOPS or bandwidth limits for applications running in a multi-tenant PaaS environment. So whenever we are running multiple applications on a single Kubernetes cluster running Portworx, all of those applications are consuming storage and the storage resources from a single storage pool configured by Portworx. This can lead to scenarios where a specific application or a specific tenant is consuming more than expected resources, which can lead to starvation when it comes to other tenants or other applications, which can lead to performance degradation as well. To avoid the, this noisy neighbor scenario, application control allows platform architects to set maximum limits for IOPS, read and write, or bandwidth, read and write in terms of megabytes per second. So this allows platform architects to own and define how much how many how much resources are available for each application or each tenant that is running on my shared Kubernetes cluster. Application control uh, allows platform architects to control the IOPS or bandwidth resources per application or tenant. It allows them to maximize the usage of the underlying Kubernetes cluster and the infrastructure. And it allows them to scale their environments more efficiently by uh, declaring these upper limits for individual applications. So let's see all of this in action. Here we have an EKS cluster, which is already running Portworx version 2.10. The Kubernetes version for this EKS is 1.21. For greenfield deployments or for new persistent volumes where you want these IOPS or bandwidth upper limits, you can use a couple of new parameters as part of the storage class definition itself. So as part of your storage class, you can use parameters like IO underscore throttle underscore read underscore bandwidth or write underscore bandwidth to set your read and write bandwidth maximums in megabytes per second. You can use these parameters as part of an existing storage class and you can any volume that gets dynamically provisioned by the storage class will automatically inherit those bandwidth maximums uh, at the volume level. Similarly, we can also create a new storage class with similar characteristics, but from an IOPS perspective. So for that, let's give it a name IOPS SC. And here the parameters are IO underscore throttle underscore read underscore IOPS and write underscore IOPS. Similar to how uh, the bandwidth uh, limits were in megabytes per second, IO limits are in uh, normal numbers so 500 read IOPS and 500 write IOPS. Once you have defined all of these parameters and your storage class looks good to you, you can basically apply this storage class configuration against your Portworx cluster. So you will have this storage class that any developers can use to deploy their applications and dynamically provision your persistent volumes, which will have these parameters pre-configured at the volume level. So let's exit out of this uh, YAML file and we'll go ahead and apply both of these storage classes against our Portwork storage cluster. We'll use kubectl apply dash f bandwidth sc dot yaml and then we'll do the same thing for iops sc uh, or bandwidth I just named the file bandwidth hyphen iops dot yaml. So we have two new storage classes in our Portwork storage cluster uh, bw hyphen sc and iops hyphen sc with those parameters configured. So any persistent volumes that are provisioned will inherit these values. So let's go ahead and uh, at this point deploy a sample application. So to generate some IO, we'll use FIO to uh, FIO jobs to provision persistent volumes and generate some IO against it. So to do that, we have uh, downloaded and installed an FIO utility. Uh, on our jump host that has access to this EKS cluster. So let's go ahead and use a simple command to initiate uh, a, a, an FIO job, uh, a random write job against our storage class. So here it will automatically provision a persistent volume 
using our BW hyphen SC storage class. And this persistent volume should have the parameter set. So once the volume is de uh, deployed and FIO has begun writing data to the persistent volume, what we can do is we can bring out, bring out another shell, which is uh, an SSH instance to the same uh, jump host, which has access to our EKS cluster. And once we have access to that second terminal, uh, we can exec into one of the portworks pods uh, and by executing into the portworks pod we can go ahead and use uh, simple pxctl or pixiecuttle stat uh, commands to look at the volume and run inspect commands to verify and validate that our uh, upper limits or application limits for bandwidth have been successfully set so let's exec into the portworks pod and here you can use the pixiecuttle utility you can use the volume list command first to get uh, the volume ID parameter for the volume that we want to inspect. And then you can just use the volume inspect command with the volume ID to get more details about that persistent volume. Here you can see you have max read bandwidth and max write bandwidth set to two megabytes per second, which matches the configuration that was done at the storage class level. So as platform architects or as developers, I didn't have to go and manually configure these limits for my volumes. It automatically inherited these from the storage class uh, definition itself. So that's uh, a way to do things and set these for new volumes. But what about existing volumes? So in the second scenario, we have a couple of FIO jobs running in parallel uh, and none of these parameters have been set for them. So as you can see, both of them are kind of in the same ballpark when it comes to uh, the, the throughput. And this is where like you can we, we are using our Grafana dashboards for portworks volumes and monitoring the performance, the read throughput and write throughput for both of our volumes. Uh, let's see how easy it is to update these parameters or set these application control limits in real time. So to do that, we'll again exec into the portworks pod, uh, do a volume uh, list to get the ID and then do a volume inspect on one of the two volumes. Here you can see we don't see any parameters being set. So no max bandwidth or max IOPS limits have been defined. Now let's change that. Let's set a, a bandwidth maximum for one, one of the two volumes and see in real time what happens after we set those limits. So you can use the volume update command and use the dash dash max underscore bandwidth command and you use off comma 10. So that what this means that there's no read maximum. It's just a maximum of 10 megabytes per second for the right bandwidth. So if you do a inspect again, you will see that parameter is being set. And if we at this point uh, switch back to the Grafana interface, we'll see that um, drop in the bandwidth utilization. So let's basically refresh the Grafana dashboard to get this real time information. It takes a few seconds for the limits to take effect uh, because we are enforcing it at the volume level and, and we have to control the application uh, 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 speed, uh, right uh, speed as well. Here you can see when we refresh the page, the bandwidth or for the throughput of one of the volumes has dropped. Let's refresh it again. So now you can see that uh, what used to be around 30 to 35 megabytes per second on refreshing this a couple of times, you will see that that bandwidth, uh, right bandwidth for one of those volumes have dropped to less than 10 megabytes per second, which is what we set as the admin or as the platform architect or as the DevOps admin. So uh, let's refresh and now you can see that we have two graphs. So since there were more resources available for the second volume, the, the, the right throughput for that increased. And since we set the max limits for our initial volume, the right throughput for that decreased. And you can see that those absolute numbers also look like our, our, for the volume that we set that maximums, it's, it looks like the right bandwidth is nine around nine megabytes per second, which is less than 10, which is what we set. So this is how easy it is to update any existing portworks volumes and avoid any noisy neighbor issues. If you have a, an application or a volume that's consuming out of the blue uh, too many resources at the storage pool level, you can use the pixie curtle volume update command and set these limits either bandwidth or IOPS limits to ensure that your other applications are not suffering from performance degradation. Uh, now, let's say you were in a scenario where somebody uh, who had access to 
uh, Pixie Cartel has said these limits and your application performance is suffering. Uh, in this scenario, what you can do is you can uh, you can use Grafana dashboards to see what your application performance looks like. And then if you're not happy with it, you can as easily go to a CLI interface use the pixie cuttle commands and set those limits or disable those limits for your persistent volume. So we are back to our Photovox pod and we have already exact into it. So let's uh, use the volume update command and basically set both of those parameters to off. So max bandwidth off comma off means there are no limits for either read or write bandwidth for this specific persistent volume with the volume ID that we have used in that command. So once you uh, execute this command, uh, Portworx removes any maximum values that are set on the volume. And if you switch back to your Grafana dashboard, you will see that the performance already is increasing for the persistent volume in question. So uh, the, the, the app that was that needed more performance, once we remove the limit, it is getting that additional bandwidth and throughput is increasing. And simultaneously, another application that was running is uh, is getting more contentious and th that performance for the second app is reducing. So this is how easy it is to use Portworx Enterprise uh, starting from version 2.10 to set these IOPS or bandwidth limits one at a time for your read and write parameters for individual applications or individual persistent volumes to ensure that there are no noisy neighbor issues in a multi-tenant platform as a service or as Kubernetes cluster that's running different kinds of applications. That's it for this demo. Thank you for watching.